Hi, and welcome to my video on Antiphase Domain Coarsening. My name is Rahul Raghun, and I'm a second year PhD student here at ASU. So, let's start. What is an antiphase domain? Um, I'm going to take the example of a nickel aluminium intermetallic alloy to explain this. So, a nickel aluminium intermetallic alloy has an ordered B2 structure, which is essentially a BCC structure, except that this BCC structure is interpenetrating. So, let me draw it out here. So, so we have a unit cell, and this unit cell is composed of aluminium atoms at the corners and a nickel atom in the body center. Okay. There would also be another structure, another unit cell, where these positions are flipped in that now the aluminium atom occupies the center, the body center, while the nickel atoms occupy the corners. Okay. I also mentioned that it is an ordered B2 structure. And the reason I mention this is because when, when I say that, um, let me go ahead and draw it out. So let's say this top layer represents the very first layer of a nickel aluminum alloy. And in this nickel aluminum layer, the lattice representation is such that the aluminum occupy the corner positions, okay? So these are going to be the very first layer and I'm going to draw these as hollow circles. Now the nickel is going to be on the second layer, okay, the body center and this is going to sit right here. I'm going to draw it as a smaller solid circle just so as to show that it is in the second layer, okay. What you see here is that the aluminium is forming the first layer and nickel forms the second layer and you can also know you also notice that these are interpenetrating structures where each of these form their own unit cells okay now this is going to represent one part of a domain okay however there's going to be another portion where essentially your nickel is going to be on top and your aluminium is going to sit in the second layer okay both of these are going to exist in the lattice however they're not going to exist together so these are going to be so let's say that I represent this side okay a cluster of lattice uh, unit cells with this sort of arrangement as red arrows okay there's also going to exist another cluster of at another cluster of lattice or uh, unit cells with this sort of arrangement and they're going to be like this okay and what's in between is going to represent your antiphase boundary. So on one side you're going to have one sort of arrangement and on the other side you're going to have another sort of arrangement. Okay. Now moving on, now we need to recognize the fact that antiphase domains are do not follow the kahn hilliard equation because in the kahn hilliard equation composition is what is defined as the order parameter. So the composition is what represent, represents the phi. And the composition in the Kahn-Hilliard equation 
over uh, a, a unit of area when differentiated with respect to time is going to be zero because the overall composition of the system doesn't change. However, that is not the case with antiphase uh, domains because as you noticed earlier, all we need for a switch from the red to green would be for these atoms to switch places. And that can happen at the boundary. And all, the, all they have to do is have a disordered structure somewhere and just an ordering has to take place for them to switch from the green to the red. Okay. So, therefore, we cannot use the kahn hilliard equation to describe, to uh, model this phenomena. So we therefore go for what is called the allen kahn equation. Now, the allen kahn equation is also represented by a free energy functional where there's an interface term and a bulk term. Now, the free energy of the interface is defined by the U, which is an interfacial energy scale, times square of A divided by 2, and A here is the characteristic length scale, which again defines your interface, times del phi square plus g of phi. And g of phi is going to be your double well potential. Okay, we'll come back to, yeah, so let's define g of phi. This is going to be equal to phi square times 1 minus phi, the whole square. It essentially represents your double well. Okay. Now, f bulk is represented by a monotonic function which, however, is linked to the bulk free energies of one system of one domain, let's call that Fm, and 1 minus h of phi of the other one. Okay. This is basically because there's always a balance between the bulk free energies of uh, one set of one domain and the other domain. And whenever this balance is shaken, you're going to have one domain basically eating up into the other domain. And we shall see this later on in our simulation. Now, um, let's move on to the kinetics of the system. The kinetics is again very similar to the kahn hilliard equation in that the free energy functional, a partial derivative of the free energy functional with respect to phi um, is proportional to the change in uh, the order parameter phi with respect to t. Okay, now the free energy functional, um, uh, the derivative, uh, variational derivative of the free energy functional is given by okay. So that is the equation. So uh, when we use this formulation in our final equation, what we end up with is okay, minus of k times f of one domain minus f of the other domain times h dash of phi. Okay, 
So that is going to be our final Khan Hathiyod equation. Okay. Now, you might be wondering what this term is. So, the dou by dou n is basically the spatial derivative along the interface, which is normal to the direction n of n. Okay. So it's going to be in the direction of the interface. So it's going to move along that direction. So, moving on, we're going to go ahead and look at a simulation to better understand what happens, the dynamics of it, okay? In this simulation, what we see is uh, antiphase uh, domain coarsening happening in real time. Uh, however, in the first two thirds of the video is what is antiphase domain coarsening. Whereas the last third of the video, we notice that uh, one of the domains starts eating into the other and uh, the red face completely disappears. So keep watching. While antiphase domain coarsening is essentially coarsening of two domains separated by an antiphase boundary, what could also happen is that one of the domains could start uh, growing larger at the expense of the other domain. And this is a characteristic of the Allen Kahn equation and only works in this set of equations and not in the Kahn-Heliot form of equations. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day. Thank you.